morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Thank you so much for joining us on this morning for our worship service. We pray that you will share this video with your family and friends. It is just good to be here. And God has blessed us one more time just to wake up and give him praise, honor, and glory for all that he has done regardless of our circumstances. It is because of God's mercies that we have not been consumed. God has kept us in our right mind and he has given us enough sense to know that we need him and that we can do nothing on our own. So on this week, you know that I celebrated my birthday. God allowed me to see 62 years and I am just so excited about that. I'm glad to be on top of the ground and the ground not on top of me. So this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Help me sing, please. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Because God has smiled on me, he has set me free, oh God has smiled on me, he's been come from Psalm 75 from the New Living Translation and it reads we thank you O God we give thanks because you are near people everywhere tell of your wonderful deeds God says at the time I have planned I will bring justice against the wicked at the time I have planned I will bring justice against the wicked. When the earth quakes and its people live in turmoil, God says, I am the one who keeps its foundation firm. I warn the proud, stop your boasting. 
I told the wicked, don't raise your fist. Don't raise your fist in defiance at the heavens or speak with such arrogance. For no one on earth from east to west or even from the wilderness shall raise a defiant fist. It is God alone who judges. He decides who will rise and who will fall. I'm going to read verse 7 again. It is God alone who judges. He decides who will rise and who will fall. For the Lord holds a cup in his hands that is full of foaming wine mixed with spices. He pours out the wine in judgment and all the wicked must drink it, draining it to the dregs. But as for me, I will always proclaim what God has done. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. I will always proclaim what God has done. For God says, I will break the strength of the wicked, but I will increase the power of the godly. We as Christians, we don't have to worry about doing the right thing. We don't have to worry about whether or not God is in control because his word says God is in control and in his own timing, God is going to make everything straight. He's gonna make everything right. He's gonna set the record straight. So help me sing, God has smiled. God has smiled on me. He has set me. Father God, we thank you now, Lord, we honor you today. God, we say hallowed to your name, for you are worthy. You're worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. We thank you, Lord, for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity to come before you. Lord, we praise you, Father God, today, for you are good, you are God. God, we thank you for smiling on us once again. We thank you, Lord, for blessing our lives and keeping us. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for blessing us to come to the house of prayer, the house of worship one more time. We thank you, Father God, for who you are, for what you do. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us in spite of us. We realize, Father God, that you are holy and we are unholy. We realize, Father God, that we don't deserve to be here, but you've given us another chance just to get it right with you. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us today as we come in your service, that your service, Father God, will be fulfilling that your service, Father God, will be taken out of the doors into the lives of many people. Bless us, Father God, that we will run, tell men, women, boys, and girls about this God we serve, that he moves mountains, that he blesses us in the midst of worship. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we come now. Bless us as we look into your word. 
that your word will speak to us and be real to us. Now, Lord, we ask you to keep us, bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. God has smiled on me. God has smiled again. He set. He set us free. He has He has set us free. God has, God has. Smiled on me. Yes, he has. He's been good to me. He's been good. He has been good. Thank God for who he is and what he's already done. The God that we serve has tremendously been good to us. Let me call your attention to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Psalm number 103 in the Old Testament. Psalm number 103 is where we are today. I'm going to read one verse, but I'm going to capitalize on all 13 of those verses. Psalm number 103, verse number 13. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew writer is writing, and in Psalm number 103, Psalm number 103, verse number 13, I'm reading from the New King James Version. New King James Version. Psalm 103, verse number 13 says, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. I want to talk about the godlike father. I didn't say the godfather. <laughs> I said the God-like father, meaning a father that ought to be like God, that ought to be symbolic to God, that ought to represent God well. Let me begin by saying Happy Father's Day to all the men who enjoy this great venture of being a father. Happy Father's Day to those who have assumed the role as a father. Happy Father's Day to those who are biological fathers. Happy Father's Day to those of you who have become adopted fathers. Happy Father's Day to those of you who are working through this process of fatherhood. Happy Father's Day to those who are ministering to children that are not your own in the community that are doing things that fathers do. Happy Father's Day to you. We look at Psalm 103, we will find a picture, first of all, of who God is and how God delivers on behalf of his children. We look at Psalm 103, we find the psalmist David talking about God himself. When we look at the psalmist, in his writings in Psalm 103, David gets excited about who God is. He gets excited about what God does. He also gets excited about how God responds. I read for you in your hearing, verse number 13, in the New King James Version, it says, as a father pities his children, so the father, so the Lord pities those who fear him. I want to replace that word pities right now with the word compassion. As the father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. You see, when we think about pity, we think about somebody that feels sorry for you and don't do anything about it. But the Hebrew writer here, David writes these words at a time that we did not know the word pity. So when you look at this word in the original context, it means to have compassion. It means to see a problem, to see an issue and do something about it. It means when you are a father, 
Not only do you have mercy, not only do you have pity, not only do you feel sorry, but you do something about it. I remember the days growing up when I had a father in my life. My daddy would always make sure that we understood without a lot of words that he had compassion for us. I can tell you several stories that that when he he really, really, really showed compassion and that how he gave of himself for us. I remember mama told us to wash down the sidewalk, the drive the, the driveway. As we wash down the driveway, this mother's intuition kicks in. And she says, don't you all slide on that water on the driveway. <laughs> I said to the boys, I said, man, I got to get me one more. Well, first of all, we were already sliding. It was a slick driveway. We washed it down, gotten rid of all the dust. And, and I had to get me one more slide. And out of a di disobedience to mama, I I slid on the driveway and fell backwards and burst a hole in my head. Nine stitches became the result. Thought dad was going to kill me, but he had compassion. And throughout the summer, when, when I was playing softball, playing baseball, running in the fields, those stitches would burst open and begin to bleed all over again. Mm. Daddy would take off work. He would come home, rush me nine miles to the Dr. Hall, Dr. Toxie Hall's office. He had compassion. He knew I had gained this bobo from disobedience, but he had compassion. He had all the right to say, make it on your own. He had all right to say that you should not have done it. But God shows compassion, and Daddy showed that same compassion. Another incident, I, I caught myself playing softball, baseball, and running, and we had this pump. We were one of the first in the, in the plantation, first on the plantation, that had a pump that would go round and round with a fan belt. And my shirt got caught in the pump as we rushed to drink water in between games. My shirt got pulled up in the pump and it was pulling me in the pump and in the pump blade and the, the belt was right at my neck. Robert Lee Irvin went and got daddy. Daddy came back and he, he unplugged the pump. He could have fussed. He could have said, boy, you got to be more careful. But daddy had compassion. And not a scar was on me because of dad's yes, compassion. I remember my brother and I riding from the country to Allen Cannon Company late at night to pick up, uh, pick up Mama from work, and and the two of us were sitting in the front seat. Daddy was driving, and a blowout took place down this dark country road. Daddy made all kinds of sacrifices. He said, "Hold on!" In the moment he had. He said, hold on. He reached his arm across, all the way across to the other side of the car and locked us in because we didn't use seat belts during that time. There was no seat belts in action. He reached across the car and caught the other door. As he was holding the car with one hand, he held his children in with the other. And as he lost control and we went down the embankment about 15 feet, I'm reminded that daddy had, had compassion. He secured us and led us to safety. There are countless stories that I can tell you that daddy had compassion on us. God is that kind of fella. God is that kind of God. God is that kind of person where he has compassion even when we don't deserve. Let's start at verse number one and see where God is. See how we get to verse number 13. I got about 15 things that I want to talk about concerning a God-like father. 
Let me say to you today, mothers, you, you've done a great job, but you can't be a father. It takes a man to be a father. It takes a man to tell a boy and teach a boy how to be a man. It takes a man to show a girl what to expect from another man. God is calling fathers to step up. God is calling men to be men that people in the neighborhood, little boys and little girls can look up to and say, that's a man of accountability. Verse number one says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. My first point is, the God-like father must be a worshiper of God. If you're going to be a God-like father, you must be someone who is a worshiper of God. You must be a worshiper of the self-existing almighty God. The one, the Lord himself, you must be a worshiper of him. Because as you worship him, children see you worship him and they realize that my daddy looks up to God. It's a sad day when men have no one they look up to. It's a sad day when children have no one they look up to. Children need to see their dads needs to see their fathers honoring Almighty God. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. We must be worshipers of God. We must praise God for who he is and what he's already got done. Yeah. Then he says, bless the Lord, O my soul, verse number two, and forget not his benefits. My second point today is a God-like father acknowledges God's benefits. A God-like father is somebody who acknowledges that the almighty God, when you worship him, the almighty God, when you obey him, the almighty God comes with benefits. The worship of him comes with benefits. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So the God-like father is one who acknowledges God's benefits. Then he begins to name these benefits. My, my first point is a God-like father must be a worshiper of God. My second point is that a God-like father must acknowledge God's benefits. My third point is, seen in verse number three, is the God-like father make provisions for his own children who forgives all our iniquities and heals all our diseases. Just as God forgives our iniquities, just as God heals all our diseases, a God-like father must be one who make provisions for his own children. When I say make provision, the Bible teaches that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children, children. A good man leaves an inheritance to two, three, four, five, six generations. And when you have provisions that are made before you die, then you're a God-like father. A God-like father makes provision. They don't wait to the time of death to get it right with God. And they don't wait to the time of death to get it right with their children. The girl said to me, she said to me, she said, well, I, I think I'm going to marry him. Uh, he has one child, but he has nothing to do with the child because of baby mama drama. Literally, I said to her, baby, if he doesn't have anything to do with his child, sooner or later, when the, when, the, when the love is gone, when it's cold, then he won't have anything to do with you. Because men will treat you as they treat their mother, and they will treat you as they treat their very own children. So you don't want to marry, you don't want to date somebody who does not respect, does not love, and does not give care to their mother and their children. A God-like father make provisions. As God make provisions for us when we go through things, a God-like father make provisions for his child. Verse number four, who redeems your life from destruction who crowns you with loving kindness 
and tender mercies. First part of verse number four says, who redeems your life from destruction. A God-like father offers protection. All you got to do is say, I'm with daddy. I'm with my daddy. When, when I'm with my daddy, there is no doubt I'm going to be protected. When I'm with him, he's going to make whatever sacrifices it takes to protect me. A God-like father offers protection. He redeems our life from destruction. Whenever destruction is near, the man who is called to be a daddy will be the one who protect his own. So a God-like father offers protection. The next part of verse 4 says, he crowns you with love and with kindness. He crowns you with tender mercies. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. So the God-like father does two things here. He gives love and he treats us kindly. A God-like father will always love on his children. And it doesn't matter what the children do. It doesn't matter where they come from. Doesn't matter if you're with the woman or not. A God-like father, father shows love and he gives kindness. A God-like father knows that it's not the child's fault that he or she is at the point where they are. If you're going to be like God, if you're going to be a God-like father, then you have to show love to your children. Men today, I know, I know, I know, I understand. Men today, I know they don't play it right. I know today there's baby mama drama. I understand. But if you're going to be like God, you're going to have to be consistent in love and consistent in loving kindness. You better got to be consistent. Your consistency must be such love and such kindness is that when they get in trouble, they call you. Verse number five, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. My next point is a God-like father is one of encouragement. He encourages his children. He, he doesn't talk them down. He satisfied them. He satisfied them by encouragement. When they say they can't do it, the God-like father said, you can do this. When they are discouraged, the God-like father encourages them. When they come to the point where they are bullied, you paint a picture to them before their eyes, in their hearts, in their minds, that they are better and just as good as anybody else. A, a God-like father is a, a father of encouragement. Mm -hmm. When children are down and out, when they are on their last thread, when they don't know which way to turn, they ought to be able to go to you as their father and be encouraged, be lifted up, be surrounded by love. And, and they need to understand that you love them so much until you will go to the ends of the world to just encourage them to make them different, to make them whole. Mm -hmm. Say God like father. A God like father is one who will lift the child up after a bad game. A God like father will lift the child up after they, they've been cut off of the cheerleading squad. A God-like father will encourage a child when they don't know when, what way to turn, which way to look, who to look to. A God-like father will be the main encourager, regardless of what's going on. Matter of fact, a God-like father will be able to find something good, a civil lining, if you would aware, be aware, a civil lining in every discouraging situation. My next point is security. Verse number six, the Lord executes righteousness and justice from all who are oppressed. A God-like father offers security. 
I said earlier that a God like Father offers protection. That's at the here and the now. But a God like Father offers security for now and later. A God-like father is somebody who will, will, will make sure that things are going well now, but they will make sure that things will go well later, even when they're not around. A God-like father will advise them, don't spend it all in one place. He offers security for them. A God-like father will offer security for them even when they're wrong, the Bible says the Lord executes righteousness. He will secure them in righteousness. A God-like father would be one who will make sure children understand right from wrong and will correct them even when they're wrong. Injustice from all who are oppressed. A God-like father is a father who will give wisdom in such a way and will give support in such a way that it becomes security. It secures them now and it secures them later. The next point is wisdom. Verse number seven. He makes known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. He makes known his ways to Moses. He makes it known. In other words, he gives us wisdom. He tells us not only should we have knowledge, but we ought to know what to do with it. You see, if a father doesn't have the knowledge, if he doesn't have the know-how, he ought to seek out to get it. If a father does not have the ability to secure a child, you ought to go out and find it. This point is, he must be wise. He has to have wisdom. Men, there are three ways. There are three ways to get wisdom. Number one, the Bible says, if a man lacks wisdom, ask it of God. Number two, if you're going to get wisdom, not only should you ask it of God, you ought to go dig for it in God's word. So my next point, my next point on the wisdom, my point is, number one, ask it of God. Number two, dig in the Bible for it. And the secrets of the Bible is great wisdom. Matter of fact, the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs outlined 32, 30, 31 chapters, rather, 31 chapters, one day of the week, one day of the month, day by day. 31 chapters. You take a chapter a day for one month. And on the months that do not have 31 days, you double up the last two days. And read it over and over again. You have to teach children how to read the word of God, especially the book of Proverbs. The reason why children are making foolish mistakes is because they do not have wisdom. And they cannot have it unless they have a father who will lead them into it or some person that will lead them into it. And I'm saying if you're going to be a godlike father, you need to be one who will usher children to ask it of God. Ask God for wisdom. Mm -hmm. Let them know that you don't have all the answers. Ask them to ask God for it. Don't try to act like you got all the answers. Don't try to act like you're the smallest person in the, in the room. Don't try to note that you the one that's the man. Just note that if you lack wisdom, you need to ask it of God. And also note, number two, that the book of Proverbs offer wisdom. And let me tell you, not just children ought to be reading it. Because there are some grown people that are making foolish decisions. So grown people ought to read it. My next thing about wisdom is that you ought to hang around people who are wise. I oftentimes tell the story that on Slim Street, there used to be an 80-year-old man and a 78-year-old woman and another 82-year-old woman, and I used to just sit there at Preacher Duncan's house, my mama's cousin, I would just sit there under the oak tree and listen to their conversation. See what they had to say. I would just sit there, and as I sat there, I got to hear wisdom being dispersed. Children, children, if you're going to be wise, you need to hang out with wise people, not foolish people. 
Watch who you hang out with. It's no problem with sitting around older people. It's no problem with sitting around wise people. And if you look at people and the decisions they have made, you see what their decisions have led them, those decisions, those same decisions will lead you in the same place. So my point to you is fathers who are God-like fathers have wisdom and they've received it from God. They've received it from the word of God and children need to hang out with people of wisdom. Look at, look at verse number seven. The, the final part says he, his acts to the children of Israel. God made known his ways to Moses. So Moses got wisdom. God made known his acts to the children of Israel. So God, like fathers, issue out blessings. So he issues out blessings. In, in this verse, verse number seven, uh, Psalm number 103, verse number seven, God made known his ways to Moses, meaning that Moses got wisdom from God. Number two, God made known his acts to the children of Israel. So God showered his blessings upon his children. God-like fathers have to be men who bless their children. They don't curse their children. They bless their children. They don't disown their children. They are blessings to their children. If you're going to be a father that God expects you to be, you must pour out blessings upon your children. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about blessings. Mm -hmm. Speak blessings into their lives. Live blessings before them. You have to make sure that your children see the mighty acts of God through you. You may be the only God-like figure that these children will ever see, and you are setting the stage for them to succeed or to fail. Be blessings to them. I mean, don't ignore them. Don't give them an iPad and say, run off. Don't give them a joystick. I guess that's old-fashioned now. Don't give them a button with thumbs to play with. Spend time with them. Be blessings to them. You need to spend time. If you're going to be a blessing to your children, you got to spend time with them. They have to get to know you. They have to get comfortable with you. They have to make sure that they love you and you love them. Be a blessing to them. You can tell the difference between a father and a daddy. A father is somebody that makes a baby. But a daddy is somebody that, that the baby is able to play with. A daddy is somebody that, that the baby, when, they, they, when you sleep, the baby stick your finger up, up, stick his finger up, up your nose. When you sleep, they, they play with your ear. And when, when you awake, they lay on your chest. It's because of the intimacy that comes with blessings. If your child is running away from you, that must be a problem. If your child is uncomfortable around you, uh, is your discipline too hard? You see, a God-like father knows how to bless his child because he knows how much to discipline them because he's been around them. He knows when not to discipline them but to talk to them. Because the Bible says that God chastens those he loves. You can't let your child do anything that child wants to do. You have to discipline them, but you must be passing out blessings. If you don't spend time with them, you can't discipline them. What would it be like if a father showed up after 12 years and introducing yourself to your child, and now you're telling the child what to do? You cannot be a blessing to them if you're, you're dealing long distance. You have to be a blessing to them. Verse number eight. The Lord is merciful and he's gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. My point now is that God is long suffering, are you? We as fathers have to learn to put up with some things we don't want to put up with. We have to learn to put up with some things that we would rather not deal with. For our children's sake, we have to suffer long. We have to endure hardship. We have to endure hardship, Paul says, as a good soldier. Daddy, stop quitting. 
Daddy, stop running away. Be a blessing and be long-suffering in your blessing. I know there's baby mama drama. I understand. Let me tell you, I really understand. I understand. I got the t-shirt. I got the jacket. I got the hat. I got the whole wardrobe along with the suit. But we have to be long-suffering. We have to endure some things. You have to go through some things. You have to put up with some things. For the children's sake. Verse number nine. He will not always strive with us. Nor will he keep his anger forever. The godlike father has to be a forgiving father. Forgiveness has to be on your plate. Whatever has happened in the past. Whatever is happening right now. A godlike father is a forgiving man. Forgiveness is on the agenda. Yes, you just have to forgive it and, and move on. You have, to, you have to forget about it and move straight on. You have to be forgiving because when you're not forgiving, you hold yourself hostage. And when you hold yourself hostage, you cannot go on any further. We have to forgive mamas. We have to forgive neighbors. We have to forgive our children. A God-like father is, is a long-suffering, forgiving man. He's, he, he, he lives with forgiveness. He is a forgiving person. He, his anger doesn't stay with him long. Don't, don't drag anger around. Don't, don't drown, drag around unforgiveness. Be a forgiving person. If you're going to be a God-like father, you have to be a forgiving person. My next point is found in verses 10 through 12. And that is the point of mercy. We have to be merciful. A God-like father deals with his children and other people in a merciful way. You have to be merciful. Verse 10, he has not dealt with us according to our sins nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, as far as he, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Talk about transgressions. We, we have trespassed against God. We have trespassed against God. We messed up with God. But God is, is a God who's merciful. He gives us grace. He gives us what we don't deserve. But when he's merciful, he does not give us what we deserve, the bad things, the whippings. He doesn't give us what we deserve. We do not even deserve to be here, but our God is a merciful God. He is so merciful that he gave us another chance. He's a merciful God. He, he's a merciful God. He's given us mercy, and he gives it to us every day, all day, over and over and over again. Has God given you another chance? Has God blessed you again? Has God been there for you over and over again? The Bible says, verse 10, Psalm 103, verse 10 through verse 12 says to us today, he has not dealt with us according to our sins. Amen. If God had dealt with us according to our sins, then he would have cut us off. If God had dealt with us and punished us according to our iniquities, God would have cut us completely off. If God had dealt with us according to what we had said, what we have done, what we have thought, God would have shut us down. But God gave us another chance because he is a merciful God. He is the merciful God. And men, if we're going to be God-like fathers, if we're going to be fathers like God, we must become merciful. The reason why we have to become merciful is because God gives us mercy. God has just been putting up with us, enduring us, long-suffering with us. God has been merciful to us. And because God has been merciful to us, we have to be merciful to our children. 
He says in verse number 10, he has not dealt with us according to our sins. God should have taken us out of here. He has not punished us according to our wickedness, our iniquities. We know we messed up. And because God has been merciful to us, we have to be merciful to others. We have to be merciful. We have to, we have to make sure that we hand out mercy and not justice. Yes, when we hand out justice, it's, it's something that, that a person deserves, but we're asking God for mercy every day, and God is asking us to be merciful to our children. Mm -hmm. We wanna be fathers that represent God well. He says, he says, as far as the heavens are above the earth, so is the great mercy of God. As far as the heaven as is from the earth, God continues to show us mercy. Then he comes back and says in verse number 12, as far as the east is from the west. Now the east will never touch the west. The west will never touch the east. And he's saying we ought to have mercy because God has mercy on us. And, and God has not dealt with us according to our sins. He has not dealt with us according to our wickedness, our iniquities. And he has placed them as far as the heavens are from the earth. And he's placed them as far as the east is from the west. So far has he, so far, F-A-R, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Because we have a merciful God. He has removed our transgressions away from us. Daddy, dad, father, be merciful. Be so merciful until your children know that I can come to him and he will have mercy on me. The problem today with the church dad is that we've gotten so holy until we have no mercy. But when we look at the text, the text declares that God has been merciful to us. And brother, just because you got the Holy Spirit, <laughs> that's why you ought to have more mercy. Because you got the Holy Spirit, because God is walking in you and, and we can really confess it and we can really brag about it. I'm saved, sanctified, and woo, filled with his precious Holy Ghost. Mercy ought to be on the scene. Have mercy. Every dad that has not spent time, every dad who has not been long-suffering, every dad who has not been forgiving, today is a good day to be merciful. Mm -hmm. Today is a good day to say, well, I'm gonna leave this thing alone because I wanna be benefited. Today is a good day to come to the conclusion that I'm gonna be merciful and my children are gonna be reaping the benefits. The psalmist says in my last, my last, my last point, in verse, it's found in verse 13 and I already mentioned it earlier. And that is be compassionate. Verse 13, Psalm 103, verse 13 says, As the father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. This word pities means compassion. As the father has compassion, then God has compassion. Meaning God can see you in a bad way and have compassion. It means that God has a way of blessing us in spite of us. Have compassion. It says, as the father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. In other words, when you respect God, mm -hmm. you gotta have compassion. Mm -hmm. As a father has compassion, meaning that you see a problem and you deal with the problem. Meaning that you see a problem and you address the problem. Means that if your child is hungry, you don't give them a stone. It means that if your child is needy, you don't turn them away. Fathers have to come 
today and recognize that we have to have compassion. And we have to have compassion regardless of how our parents treated us. I know some of you are going to say, well, my daddy was nowhere around. I'm not studying him. Well, you set a pattern where you make a difference. Some of you have come to the conclusion that my, my daddy didn't treat me right and I only know what my daddy taught me. Well, let me just share with you. You just said he didn't treat you right. You got to treat yours right. Have compassion. Have love. Have kindness. Have, be there to be the protector. Be their security. Be the one that blessed the Lord. What would it be like if men all over this world will let their children and the neighbor's children see them as worshipers unto the Lord? What would it be like if men all over the world will acknowledge that God comes with great benefit, acknowledge that honoring God comes with great benefits? What would it be like if men all over the world would provide for their children instead of taking for their children. What would it be like if men all over the world would provide protection for their children and make sure that nothing happens to them and make sure that the devil does not have control of them? What would it be like if men all over the world would love and show kindness toward their children? Would this be a better world if men all over the world would offer encouragement for their children? Lifting them up instead of beating them down. What would it be like if we could call on the men all over this world to offer security for their children, to make sure that they are good now and they're good later? What would it be like if men all over this world would have the wisdom, the know-how, and how to handle that understanding before their children, that children will grow wise because of these men? What would it be like if men, if men would be blessings to their children and not curse to their children? What would it be like if men all over the world would deal with their children in a blessed way, in a blessed manner? What would this world be like if we had men all over this world that were long-suffering, that would suffer long through stuff, that won't give up, won't walk out, and won't quit? What would it be like if men, just men, just, just if men did their part and stuck in there and was long-suffering like God is? What would it be like if men would be forgiven when they've been wrong? If, if, if they've been wrong over and over again, they would be forgiving and they would forgive over and over again. What would it be like if we had a group of men who are fathers that would be forgiving toward mothers, forgiving toward children, forgiving because of the system, but be forgiving toward the system? What would it be like if we would just be forgiving men, men of forgiveness? What would this world be like? If we had a team of men that would be merciful, that would have mercy, when things deserve to be done away with, we would have mercy. When things would be deserved, be deserved to be beat upon, we would have mercy. When children, we think in our minds, deserve for us to walk away, we would have mercy and come back. What would this world be like if we had merciful men? And finally, what would this world be like if we had compassionate men? Men who would take on the role and deal with it. Men who would be so compassionate that they would even fear God. Verse 13 says, Psalms 103, verse 13 says, As the father has compassion toward his children. So the Lord has compassion toward those who fear him. In other words, if you would just have compassion, if you would just show a little respect toward God, if you would just show a little compassion toward mankind, toward the, the young people of this world, whether they're your biological children or not, show some compassion. Stop saying, oh, y'all going to go to hell and die. Well, point is, somebody told us that too. Stop saying, y'all don't know how to act. Have compassion. Try to get in and understand it. 
I know they play music we can't understand. I used to play a CB and speak, speak CB talk, and my parents didn't understand it either, but they had compassion. I know, I know these children are different. I, I know they got off a, a different kind of truck. I know their lives are painting a different picture than what we want to see. But if we had men that would have some love and compassion toward these children, we would live in a better world. That's why principals and superintendents are telling men all over the world, Come to school on the first day. Come to school on the last few days. Just be there. If there are men in the house, then the devil will turn his back and walk away. If there are holy men in the house, praying men in the house, then these men will put the devil on the run. Would this world be a better place? The text declares that God is one that we ought to respect God is one we ought to fear. He says we ought to be true worshipers. He says we ought to bless the Lord with all that is within us. We ought to bless his holy name. The only way for you to get to that point of blessing the Lord is that you must be born again. You have to be born again. You've got to be born again. You can't do it on your own. You can't, you can't just muster up enough strength to make these things happen. These are not natural occurrences. These are spiritual occurrences. That's why verse one of Psalm 103 says we are blessing the Lord. We are blessing him because we are spiritual beings. I challenge you today, men, to respect the Lord. He's prepared a way for you to be able to do all these things, but you can't do it without Jesus. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus the Christ voluntarily gave his life. He was long-suffering. He died on Calvary. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. But early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. Will you trust him today? Will you try Jesus? Trust him to be your savior. Trust him to be your Lord. The same God we talk about who has long suffering. He gave his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, as a ransom for you and me. This is your invitation. This is your opportunity to get to know Jesus. Just trust him. If you can just believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on Calvary. They laid him in a barber tomb. But early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. He rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. If you just can believe that story, you can be saved right here, right now. Will you bow your head with me and ask Jesus to come into your life? Today is a good day to get to know Jesus. You can remember it was Father's Day, 2022, that I gave my life to Christ. The Father in heaven is happy. Will you bow your head with me and repeat this simple prayer and invite Christ into your life? Just say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Jesus, thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer honestly, believing that Jesus is the Son of God, that he rose from the dead, and he can change your life. We believe that you're born again. We believe that you're saved. We believe that whenever you die, whenever you leave earth, you're going to heaven. We believe that you are 
heaven bound. Maybe there may be others of us who struggle. We struggle with this life. There may be men who are struggling with fatherhood. I want to pray with you and pray for you. Father God, we thank you now, Lord, for men. We thank you for those who've been falsely accused. We thank you for those who've been abused. We pray that you bless them now. We pray for those who've been oppressed. We ask you, Father God, to redeem them now. Strengthen these men to be men who will be godly examples. Men that children can look up to. Bless, Father God, those men that have gone before us. That have set godly examples for us. That have been our protection. Our security. Now, Lord, we pray for those who are listening. Touch them where they hurt. Build up the mindset of the bereaved. Bless, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to set us afire for you. Bless us to know you in a very real way. Draw us nearer, Father God. Nearer, precious Lord, to your, to your sight, to you. Keep us focused. Bless us to remember our purpose. Bless us to obey you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We thank God for this privilege, this Father's Day. Again, happy Father's Day to every father, every pr prospective father, every man who's looking forward to being a father. And if you're not a father now, I challenge you today to adopt, even not legally, just adopt somebody's child and Make sure they're led in the right direction. It is often time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord. If you're listening to me today, we want to make sure that you have this opportunity to give to the Lord. You can give in two means. Number one, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.Jesus at yahoo.com is our Zelle account. Please include your name, your address as possible. Or you can mail in your gift to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Four, five, nine. And for those of you who are well aware that thieves have vandalized our church and we're still in the, the mode of reconstruction and you want to give, I'm asking every adult to give $250 to this cause over and above uh, your tithes and offering, $250 from every adult. I'm asking every young person, every child to give $50 over and above your tithes and offering. We have taught our children to give tithes and offering, and now we're asking for this sacrificial gift. And the answer is yes, we do have insurance, but you know how insurance is. <laughs> they take your money every month, but when it's time to give it, it's a big delay. And we're ready. It's been one month to the day that we've been out of our building. May 19th, thieves ravished our building, ravished the the copper from our building, from the pole to the building underground some 200 feet. And we are asking that you help us to, to restore it even better than what it was. So please, ma'am, please, sir, give sacrificially and, and watch what God does. We're looking forward to being back in our building and doing things that, that we are used to doing and even in a better way. Whatever the devil tries to do, he means for harm, but God means it for good. And this is a moment where God will strengthen us and make us whole. This is a moment where God will take us to another level. As we walk together, we stick together. Let me just take this time to say thank you to my brothers in the ministry, other pastors, other ministers. 
thank you, brothers, for for you and your congregation coming through for us and donating financially. And you all have been tremendously kind to us. Well, thank you for every woman's ministry, every ministry that has come up beside us, every para ministry, every para church, every individual, and even corporations, companies have given toward this. Again, thank you. Thank you for being so kind. Thank you for being one of a kind. Thank you for, for blessing us. And we're so glad that you have, you have blessed us and been a part of our lives. Let us pray over our offering. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for every gift. We ask you to bless every giver. And we ask you, Father God, to continue to bless us. That vandalism will be no more. Father, we pray that you continue to walk with us and bless our lives, that we will continue to lift Jesus and Jesus alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We want to recognize and we want to thank the Women Empowerment Training Institute and Sister Perley Shivers being the director. She has, she as, as well as her ministry called WEEDY, Women Empowerment Training Institute, we want to thank them for giving uh, three scholarships to students of Turning Hearts Ministries. And many of these, stu these students also are affiliated with the New Beginning Church. These students submitted essays and videos. This is the, the, the time of year that children receive scholarships as they prepare to go off to college. And these students, uh, these three, have been tremendously blessed based on their essays and based on their scholarship scores. Sister Perley Shivers, Dr. Perley Shivers, and Weedy has granted $400 to Xavier McDonald, $400 to Xavier McDonald, $500 to Anaya Justin. Justin, we want to thank her and we also want to thank Dr. Shivers for a $500 donation to Caleb O'Neill. These three are on their way to college somewhere and uh, Weedy recognized the need and they have sown into the lives of these young people by way of their essays and by way of their contributions to the community. We wanna thank Dr. Shivers and the Weedy Foundation Institute for what they are doing in the community. And they don't just do this at the end of the school year, they do it year round where they bless young people and wanna thank them for being just that way. Again, thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church at our remote location on today. We look forward to worshiping with you live face to face in our building soon and very soon. You pray that God will give us favor and as you pray, God will give us favor and we'll be back in our building. And it'll be just like a brand new building all again. We'll have a grand entrance all over again and we will celebrate all over again. We've already had two grand entrances. We had one grand entrance when we walked into the building, December 2nd, Sunday, 2007. We walked in our building, we had a grand entrance. Then we shut down for nearly two years for COVID-19. After the COVID-19 scare was over, we had a grand interest going back into our new building. Well, let me just share with you, soon and very soon, because of your prayers and your gifts, we'll be walking into our brand new building again, a 15-year-old building we'll be walking back into again with another grand interest where we can shout our troubles over and God can bless us. I'm looking forward to it. Are you looking forward to it? Thank you so much. We're looking forward to worshiping together face-to-face -face one more time. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Stay tuned, stay advised, and look forward to walking into our grand interest for the third time. Amen. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, we thank you, Father God, that we have God-like fathers. Thank you, Lord, for being a godly example. Thank you, Father God, for your love and your compassion. We ask you to bless us now. Now unto him is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen and amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. <laughs>